Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Welcome back, wildlings. Now, one of the most important parts of life is learning, education. And you can do that in school, from books, from the school of life, however you want to do it. But if you really want to learn, if you really want to accumulate some wisdom, one of the things I recommend you do is get out and do some traveling. I mean, real travel, outside your comfort zone, outside your familiar experience. Expand those experiences. So many places and events in the world, from history to learn from, to see and remember. You may even get something physical out of it. Only, I don't recommend taking too many souvenirs from the subject of tonight's narrative of mercantile malpractice, the flesh market. Have you ever been to Edinburgh? Beautiful city. No matter what time of year you go, the castle that sits at the center of the city is awe-inspiring. Looking down on the surrounding area from the mount, the peaks and valleys of the land have resulted in a city that flows with the landscape. Streets that surround can be steep with numerous sprawling alleyways, even steeper. It's here that we find the flesh market close. Now, it could be mistaken for any other darkened causeway in the city. It sits among the shops and tourist traps, relatively non-threatening, and it can be used as a shortcut to get down to the station if you're in a hurry. The name, however, has been justified through some who point out that the flesh markets were a local term for butchers, and through others who suggest that it's a hangout of women of the first vocation. These are incorrect. There is a market on the close, but flesh is not the product, you see. It's the currency. Market hours are from dusk until dawn, and the entrance fee is one mouthful of your own blood. Prepare a glass and progress down the alley. As you get halfway down, swig from the glass and spit it against the wall. The blood will bubble and spread across the wall, coagulating into a hard scab. This will then start to flake and scatter. A rather anticlimactic door will be revealed beneath. Stepping through is disorienting, as logic will tell you that you're stepping into a building. Uh, the place that you're stepping into actually has no walls, with darkness shrouding the edges. It's at the penumbra that a number of stalls are set up, run by individuals who look like market traders from across the globe. From Arabian merchants to Cockney grocers to a New York street con man, all of their clothes are splattered with blood and offal. These figures will entice you to come to speak to them, and they'll gesture to numerous signs around their stalls regarding the sales that they're currently having. Upon approaching one of the stalls, they'll start to pressure you to make a deal with them. Now, you're certainly welcome to do so, and the products that are available are certainly worth consideration. Starting at the cheap end of the spectrum, you may wish to offer one breath. A longful will net you the knowledge of the weather for the next day. In itself, it's a rather pointless purchase in this age of smartphones and the Met Office, but centuries ago, it was invaluable. Taking this offer will result in the seller reaching out with his hand, flattened, and then quickly grasping into a fist as you breathe. The air will literally be stolen from your lungs and cause a few moments of gasping as you catch your breath. Are you attached to your fingers? How attached? I mean, do you reckon you could do without your little pinky? This sale will provide you instant forgiveness from any one person you desire for any wrongs that you may have encroached against them. Agreeing to this one will cause the trader to grin and shout, One Yubitsume special coming right up! They'll lunge forward, grab your wrist, pinning it to the table. Don't resist because no one likes a tough sell. 
a flash of steel, and you'll be minus one digit. Just remember, you can only pay this one twice. Now make no mistake, it will hurt. There will probably be a lot of blood, and if you don't take care of the wound, it might even get infected. As the price goes up, you may want to consider taking precautions regarding what you trade. Tourniquets and sutures would certainly not go amiss in a place like this. Now, some of the trades will seem familiar, and may harken back to stories and legends that have existed for millennia. This is the influence the market has had on our culture, leeching in over the centuries. A pound of flesh will make it impossible for the next person you make a trade with to renege on the deal. It's especially useful if you don't trust the company you keep. It has no use within the market itself, as all of the traders here are trustworthy, and they'll honor a purchase to the letter and to the spirit. Best to leave this transaction until last. How about one of your eyes? Depth perception is overrated anyway. Offering up one of them will allow you to converse with our avian friends. You'll be able to call down birds from the trees, and they'll be able to answer any questions that you may have. It's advisable, however, that you avoid ravens. They have their own agenda, and it's not in your best interests. The salesman will grab you around the throat and slowly pry his fingers into the socket of your eye. A snap of the wrist, and your visual organ will rest in their palm. Another snap, and it'll disappear. It is at this point that you may want to consider stronger measures to ensure your survival of payment. In this strange little world of ours, the market is hardly the strangest thing you've ever seen. Artifacts and incantations exist that can allow the body to continue to function long past the point at which mortal coils should be shuffled off. One or two can be picked up here, but few are willing to live without their <coughs> sexual organs. It seems that eternity is just that little bit colder without the ability to get your rocks off. I'm not going to go into the details as to how they're taken. Suffice it to say that it's unpleasant and messy. At this point, the prices become a little more vital. What would you take for, say, your stomach in this deal? It would merit you the ability to understand the desires of anyone you talk to. Whilst you converse with them, your mind will be filled with the images of that which they covet the most. This would provide a significant advantage to any budding salesman. And the deal has been taken up by several of the stall holders here in the market themselves. Some may argue that such a gift would be more poetically suited to the heart. That vascular muscle, however, is part of an altogether different deal. By bartering your heart, you can guarantee the happiness of any given individual for the rest of their life, however long that may be. The removal of these types of organs can be significantly painful, but the dealers will allow you a moment to prepare yourself before they produce a short, keen blade. One practiced swipe later and they'll be digging into your tissues. They have unerring accuracy and the level of cleanliness that would rival any surgeon. Now it's acknowledged in some places that once the deal's been sealed, a buyer may have second thoughts and may want to back out. Buyer's remorse, they call it. This is not one of those places. Most of the contract is left unspoken, but you're expected to have done your research here. The buyout clauses they're a killer. <laughs> Whilst most of the body can be put on the table, there are, in fact, limitations. The fact of the matter is that the brain is the seat of your sentience and cannot be fully traded in. I say fully. Uh, there was one individual who offered to lobotomize the part of the brain that holds memory as a part of the deal. The problem is that he cannot remember what it is that he received in return. I hear he suffered from night terrors all the rest of his days. 
Now at this point, I will offer you a warning. Up until now, I've detailed the price list for your own body parts. Whatever you do, do not attempt to purchase anything in the market with the organs of another person. Every figure in the market will stop and stare at you and the one you attempted to defraud will scream, THAT IS NOT YOURS TO TRADE! Whatever it is that you've tried to barter with, that body part will be taken from you as punishment. Very literally, an eye for an eye. Now, despite whatever theological perspectives you may hold, offering your own soul will elicit the same result. There have been many theories postulated for this response, but the honest answer is, we just don't know. The market's been trading in blood and bone for as long as civilization has existed, though the entrance has moved from city to city. Many have visited and shook hands with the butchers, though not quite as many have gotten those hands back. A smart man would wonder how it is that these individuals are capable of honoring the deals that they broker. A smarter man would ask himself why his body parts are of such high value in this economy. Just understand that it is still supply and demand, and as long as there are fools willing to supply, you shouldn't need to concern yourself with who is doing the demanding. So in your travels, if you're smart, you may learn practices to go with the lessons that you'll learn. Research and preparation to be ready for what you'll be entering into. Practice and technique to learn how to act in such situations. And perhaps most important, self-preparedness and acceptance of the prices you will be expected to pay. Stay scary, wildlings. Try to keep your deals in your favor before you sign, and make the most of your nights.